Okay. Uh, good. I think it's still good morning because it's not 12 yet. So good morning, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome everyone here for a vote on proposed introduction 1541B. My name is Mark Traeger. I'm the chair of the Committee on Education. I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues that are present, uh, beginning with the, the gold star to Councilmember Borelli today from Staten Island, got the gold star, amazing, right? Uh, Council Member Levin, Council Member Levine, Council Member Barron, uh, Council Member Grudentrick, Council Member uh, Lika Amprey Samuel, Council Member Barrow Lewis, great to see you, Council Member Brennan, and anyone else I missed? I think, I think that's it for now. Oh, Council Member, oh, the chair, uh, Danny Drum, yes, our great, our great chair. Thank you, Chairman Drum. Um, on May 1st, 2019, this committee held a 10 hour plus hearing. Uh, if we can just close that door, I'd appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, on May 1st, 2019, this committee held a 10 plus hour hearing on school segregation. Uh, at the hearing, we heard powerful testimony from students, parents, educators, administrators, community leaders, and other stakeholders who spoke out about the extraordinary benefits of school diversity. All are impacted by the issue of segregation in our schools, none more directly than our students. Our city has long had issues with school segregation. However, the conversation about segregation in specialized schools was recently re-sparked when the DOE released the 2019 admissions offer results at the city's eight test-based specialized high schools. The results showed that black and Latino students who make up nearly 70% of the city's student population received only 10% of all offers to these schools. Advocates from many sides believe that these numbers are egregious and unacceptable, but there is broad disagreement about the solution to this problem. This debate was and continues to remain intense on both sides of this issue. As I pointed out then, uh, many of the pro policy proposals put forward by the de Blasio administration did not involve the most critical stakeholders, students, parents, and the larger communities that would be directly impacted by the proposals. We promised that the council would take a different approach and that any legislation we passed would involve community input, a conversation driven from the bottom up rather than top down. Proposed introduction 1541B keeps true on that promise. This introduction by Speaker Johnson would create a specialized high school task force. Appointments will be, will be by the mayor and the council. Mandated participants include students, parents, educators, and education policy experts in the field of testing, child development, standardized testing, and educational measurement. There is also a mandated public hearing process to hear from as many community voices as possible. On or before May 1st, 2020, the task force will be required to submit a report on recommendations to achieve greater diversity at the specialized high schools. It is our hope that our colleagues in Albany will see that a community-driven process has happened here in the city and enact some of the proposals that our community wants to see change. There were other bills heard at the May 1st hearing that I look forward to advancing very soon. These other bills require greater reporting by the DOE on student uh, um, on demographics of our schools and also an introduction that I'm proud to sponsor that would for the first time require the DOE to report on the demographics of teachers, support personnel, and school leadership. As we develop a great picture of conditions on the ground, we could appropriately push the DOE and state to enact lasting change that will truly bring integration to our classrooms. I'd like to thank committee staff, uh, Malcolm Buterhorn, uh, our counsel, Jan Atwell, policy analyst, Kalima Johnson, policy analyst, Chelsea Betamore, financial analyst. I also want to thank my staff, Anna Scaife, my chief of staff, and Vanessa Ogle, my uh, policy uh, director. And with that, I will now turn to the clerk to call the vote. Lee Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, committee on education, introduction 1541B. Chair Traeger. I vote aye. Barron. Uh, request to explain my vote. Yes, Councilmember Barron, to explain your vote. Thank you. I just want to say that I'm pleased to see that we're going to have this task force, which will examine the use of multiple measures that can be used to grant admissions to the specialized high school. Over the past two decades, there's been a steady decline in the number of black and Latino students admitted to the so-called elite specialized high schools. And we've heard the data about the number of students that represent uh, their presence in the system as compared to their attendance at these schools. 
uh, the, the, this situation is governed by the fact that the sole criteria at this point for admission to these schools is a single test. And the American Psychological Association and the American Research Association and the National Council on Measures in Education have concluded that, quote, a high stakes decision with a major impact on a student's educational opportunities, such as admission to a specialized or gifted and talented program, should not turn on the results of a single test, end quote. So I'm pleased to know that this task force is going to examine other measures that will be considered as admission for uh, these elite specialized high schools. And with that, I vote aye. Drama. Aye. Levin. I vote aye, and I want to uh, congratulate everyone that worked on this, and uh, I'd like to uh, add my name as a sponsor. Thank you. Levine. Uh, vote aye on all. Gordenchik. Permission to explain my vote, Mr. Chairman. Councilmember Gordenchik to explain his vote. I am voting aye, um, and I, I would just like to um, ask the chair and the members of this committee and, and all the members of the council um, to remember that while we work to diversify uh, the students uh, in the, stu in the uh, what we was phrased as the elite schools of New York City, we also have to remember that many of the students are geographically challenged. And um, from my district in Eastern Queens, and I dare say Mr. Borelli's district uh, on Staten Island, it is an extremely long ride uh, to get to Stuyvesant, to get to Bronx Science, to get to Brooklyn Tech. Um, you know, and so many parents forego the opportunities these children might have. We do have an outstanding school in New York College campus, which is accessible uh, to students in Northeast and Southeast Queens, communities that I represent, um, but it's small. And so we're working forward now, hopefully, to expand that school. I, I have hope. Um, there is room and there is uh, the desire to do so among the elected officials in, in our community, so I'm hopeful that that will happen. Um, we have to remember this is a very, very large city, and we have to provide an equal opportunity for all our young people. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for indulging me, and I vote aye. Ampre Samuel. I vote aye. Brennan. Aye. Lewis. Aye. Borelli. Wish to explain my vote. Councilmember Borelli to explain his vote. So I, I guess I will be the one dissenting no vote uh, and just want to register uh, with the committee that after hearing the, the testimony that we heard and hearing from uh, so many people on both sides, but more fundamentally reviewing the DOE's own school quality snapshots, uh, I remain convinced that the problem is that we have schools in our system uh, which the DOE is telling parents that are, are doing a great job uh, and yet seemingly can't produce students that not only can pass this test, whether it be through prep or through their general curriculum, uh, but also pass state exams that objectively measure uh, students. I think that, that challenge is more fundamentally important uh, than the, the, the determination of any small fractional amount of the students that would graduate that school. The bigger problem is the hundreds of kids who are in middle schools where the DOE has seemingly no plan uh, to address uh, the failings of the teachers and administrators of those schools, so I vote no. Kalos. Aye and all. A vote of 10 in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. Item has been adopted by the committee. Uh, I will hold the vote open for 10 minutes.